Welcome to the daily word for the season of Pentecost. Today's reading is taken from the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter eleven, verse nine to chapter twelve, verse eight. Rejoice, young man, while you are young. And let your heart cheer you in the days of your youth. Follow the inclination of your heart, and the desire of your eyes. But know that for all these things, God will bring you into judgment. Banish anxiety from your mind, and put away pain from your body, for youth. And the dawn of life, our vanity. Remember your Creator in the days of your youth, before the days of trouble come, and the years draw near when you will say, "I have no pleasure in them." Before the sun and the light and the moon and the stars are darkened, and the clouds return with the rain, on the day when the gods of the house tremble, and the strong men are bent, and the women who grind cease working, because they are few. And those who look through the windows see dimly. When the doors on the street are shut, and the sound of the grinding is low, and one rises up as the sound of a bird, and all the daughters of song are brought low. When one is afraid of heights. And terrors are in the road. The almond tree blossoms, the grasshopper drags itself along, and desire fails. Because all must go to their eternal home, and the mourners will go about the streets. Before the silver cord is snapped. And the golden bowl is broken, and the pitcher is broken at the fountain, and the wheel broken at the cistern. And the dust returns to the earth as it was, and the breath returns to God, who gave it. Vanity of vanities. Says the teacher, "All is vanity." This is the word of the Lord. Know the Lord who made you. Silver is nothing, gold is nothing. Life is like a dream. Memories create pain, full of suffering and sadness. Seeing the silliness in the past with arrogance and high self-esteem, I'm glad to serve now, even if I need to exchange for a lifetime of poverty. I would like to meet the Lord. Someone once said to me that many people believed in Jesus when they were at the end of their ropes, such as suffering from critical illnesses or business failures or or family breakups. They believe in Jesus at those difficult times. It's easy for us Chinese to associate the pursuit of faith with the Buddhist pursuit of desires and happiness in life, which is regarded as vanity. It seems that Christian belief is also a comforting spirit for setbacks and failures in life, and a magical medicine for negative emotions in desperations. Therefore, there is the above understanding. The Book of Ecclesiastes in the Old Testament also mentions that all things in life are vanity. So it gives people a superficial impression that life is fickle and meaningless, and people look at life negatively. Is that really what Ecclesiastes is trying to say? If you pay close attention to today's scripture, you will know that you have misunderstood. 
at the beginning of today's scripture in Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 9, it encourages young people to cherish happiness in their life, to enjoy what they love and the ideal they pursue in their hearts, because God will judge in the future. We should not only control ourselves and stop doing wrong things. Chapter 11 verse 10 also says, You should have the courage to actively overcome all difficulties, including anxiety and fear in your heart, and move forward bravely. Just as the Chinese say, don't waste your youth in vain. When you are old, you regret not taking the time to do meaningful things when you are young. What is the most important life ideal for young people to pursue? Chapter 12 verse 1 definitely encourages us to remember our maker while we are alive and strong and happy. The English translation is even more wonderful. When you are young, before the days of trouble come and we are close to saying to ourselves, I have no pleasure in them, remember the Lord who made you. One of my favourite poems when I was young came from this Bible verse. Value your youthful moments to know the Lord who made you. Use your youthful vitality to pursue truth and life. Things in the world disappear in an instant, but the Lord is the refuge of life. Don't wait for the boy's hair to turn white. Remain sadness in your life. Chapter 12 verses 2 to 6 uses 20 metaphors again and again to explain that life is bound to be like things becoming old and exhausted and we will go to old age to infirmity and sickness and death. These metaphors are worth scrutinising. Our generation has less contact with the grinding mill. It is just two heavy stones. When a large number of crops, such as grain and seals, are placed in it, the donkey and the foal are strongly driven and turn rapidly. The sound is shocking, but at the end of the milled grain into wheat, you have something different. The milling slowly stopped and the sound came soft. In chapter 12, verse 6, other things such as a broken silver cord, a broken golden bowl, broken pitcher at the fountain, broken water wheels at the cistern are all common things used at the time. There will be a day in life when the dust returns to the ground and the spiritual energy will return to the Lord who gave us the spirit. The teacher needs to honestly remind us that life is too short and we are bound to go on a journey of debilitation. Instead of passively lamenting that life is helpless and meaningful, saying all is vanity, go back to the explanation of vanity in chapter 11 verse 10. It means actively not wasting your youthful time. Getting rid of physical and mental trouble, seize the opportunity and do meaningful things because one day we'll all have to give an account to the Lord who judges us. Let's have a time of reflection. What's your interpretation of the experiences of emptiness in life? What prevents us from pursuing our ideals in life and living boldly? Is it because of our physical conditions? How can we overcome these difficulties? Many people think that being old is enough to believe in the Lord before death. Why does the author of Ecclesiastes encourage us to know our maker while we are still young? Let us pray. God, thank you that you created us in your own image. When we leave your abundant life, life will be like a broken kite, becoming directionless, meaningless and contentless. May the Lord lead us so that we can know the Lord, worship the Lord and follow the Lord so that we can live a happy, fulfilling and abundant life. We pray this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.